Hi everyone, this is Bonus and today's video is all about Perth, the third part, right? If you have missed previous videos, it's there in my description box, the links. And uh, I mean, it's not about just the Puff pastries, it has a lot of things. I mean, basically it's related to the culinary and the bakery and pastry. And uh, coming up with lots of new techniques, so do share, do subscribe to my channel press the ring bell icon and uh, so you can get the notification one more thing i want to add here that if i forget some of things to add in this video so i always add that point in my description so if you feel like something some video where it's really tough for you to understand some of you in an easier way i used to write in the description so always go to the descriptions always check the descriptions whatever i feel like adding i used to add there i mean i feel like something i skipped in my video what i wanted to share so that things i always add in my description so do check the description and also you can check my playlist it has a lots of videos in category wise you can easily find your video I mean if you're looking for something particular right here we go and start the session now we'll start with the dough Croissant dough is a bit firm but puff dough is not I have already said in the part one that croissant dough is a bit firm but when it comes to puff dough is not because puff dough has Puff dough is a mix of flour, fat, salt and water. Fat means not much fat. It's going to be very, very less fat we're going to add here. But again, depends on your, uh, I mean, how much you really want to spend to make a puff dough. I mean, you have to see your profit also, right, when you're going to sell your product. So if you're selling in a really good amount, I mean expensive, then that's okay that you can really add. If you want to add something else you can add but the main thing is here is this is the puff right we want that crunchiness and lean dough gives that crunchiness clear with this so we don't really add much of uh, any i mean much of fat or anything which will make this thing as a firm clear puff dough is always kind of a little uh, tough why because croissant dough has eggs it has milk it has a uh, uh, butter Clear? Again, depends what kind of a croissant you want. I mean, if it's little expensive. I mean, as much as expensive ingredients you're going to use, that kind of a product you're going to achieve. Simple as that. But when it comes to puff, go for the lean dough, right? Means doesn't have much of things. Salt, flour, water, and a little bit of fat. Simple as that, right? So is a lean dough. Clear? And add a little bit of vinegar, lemon juice, or you can add cream of tartar. Why? Why we add this one? I mean, any any of this, right? Lemon juice, try to avoid because uh, this will give you the flavor to this dough for that reason. Go for the vinegar or you can go for the cream of tartar. But why? Why we add this? Because it makes the dough more extensible and elastic. It actually gives a strength to the gluten. That's the only reason we add vinegar cream of tartar simple as that right just a small recall croissant dough is firm because if it has a lot of eggs i mean it has i mean this dough contains eggs milk uh, butter so depend that how much you spend on this according to that you can make your dough so here croissant has those kind of a things for that reason is firm but when it comes to puff dough supposed to be a lean dough lean dough right as much of lean that much of crunchy is going to give Simple as that. Uh, for example, here I'm going to say about the lavash. You know lavash? Exactly. Lavash, how crunchy it is. So just think, lavash dough and layering of butter, you're laminating. How crunchy you're going to get the product? I mean, just try to figure it out. Very, very important. When you make anything, try to figure it out why this is so crunchy and why we are not adding any tenderizing ingredients here much in the puff dough. Just because of that give a really nice I mean a uh, crunchiness and a nice flaky how lean dough and then the butter layer because more fat I mean more layer of fat that much crispy and flaky is going to be that is a basic technique clear with this let's see which flour should we use when it comes to puff dough what kind of a flour you should use so here we go flour with protein content between 11 to 12.5 percentage it will provide good strength and why we gonna use this much of percent here we go it will provide a good strength and prevent the dough from tearing while laminating deliver this just to prevent the dough from tearing while laminating for that reason we use this much percentage of 
protein in our flour for the good strength. About kneading, here I'm going to explain you about the kneading. Do not knead excessively because I have already mentioned in my previous parts that if you do excessively, I mean I have mentioned, right, this is the one. We have to stop here and this is where the gluten or you can say window pin is going to. So this gap is going to fill by while doing laminating, right? That is the reason I have clearly mentioned that do not knead excessively. What problem we're going to face if we do this it can be affect the moisture right then it will affect the DDT desired door temperature supposed to be 23 to 25 clear and here fully development of gluten because if you do excess then fully develop gluten it will tight the dough and uh, moisture will affect because of excessively what happened the water is start reducing so it's affecting the moisture and also will affect the temperature Simple as that. Once kneading done, weight, portion, flat, cover and rest. Once done, take the dough out from your machine, weigh out, I mean, it's going to be a bulk, right? Like 15 kg. Just divide into 3 kg, right? According to you, then just, just make it a portion into 3, 3, 3 kg, right? Then make, make them flat like this right and then cover and rest I mean this wrap give rest for the one day this is very basic but very important these points are very very important clear with this let's see the next resting the gluten helps in relaxing the gluten strands clear and the starches the starches which is present in the flour right the starch in the flour to absorb liquid which is turns result in more stable chilled dough ready for lamination. See, this is very important to understand that why resting? Because resting helps the dough to give relax to the gluten strands because just worked like 15 kg of a dough we made it so it was like running like that in the machine itself. We want the gluten to rest now right and the resting time what happened the starch which is present in the flour actually it absorbs the liquid properly like kind of a hydration so absorb the liquid which turns resin in more stable and chill dough what happened and why we actually flat because this flat will help to chill faster because this much of thick this thin matters right this thick means the inner part of the dough won't be get uh, I mean uh, chilled properly I mean it will take a lot lot time but when you make it like this thin I mean this will chill faster for example, I mean, see here, this is the stock pot, okay? This much of things you have. If you want to chill this, pro it, this, this thing, if you want to chill this thing, it won't. But if you use a pan like this, flat pan, and you have just spread it over here, this will get chilled faster because it got a space, a good amount of space, right? And it can easily, I mean, properly exposing, properly exposing to the air that's the reason this will make faster I mean this will cool faster whereas this one will take time because this is very dense but this is not dense this is flat you getting me this is I mean this is the best way to understand that why we make our dough completely flat not just like bulky like this clear make it flat it will expose faster and will get good amount of rest I mean faster this will chill faster simple as that that's the reason flat it up this is where I have mentioned here right flat cover and rest that's the reason clear with this result in more stable chilled dough ready for lamination I mean if you're re really in a hurry and you don't really have a complete one day for the rest flat it up keep it and then use it you can use it but after laminating but every fold you have to give rest it is better if the dough is rested overnight in the chiller before adding the butter slap right this is like just the dough we flat and rest if it's, it's better if you can just give her overnight in the chiller before adding the butter slab I mean before you start then closing process I mean adding the butter and start lamination in the seater clear now next we have here is enclosing the fat let's figure it out before enclosing the fat the texture of the both dough and fat need to be similar well this is one of the important point because if you don't focus on this 
you won't be get a perfect product because it will start tearing or uh, you can say like the butter will not going to spread perfectly when you're going to laminate right so the dough and the fat need to be in similar temperature when it comes to texture similar texture and the temperature well people don't really use i mean people don't really use this word like temperature in here but i actually focus like okay fine when i feel it the dough and the butter i mean this is the butter slab okay and this is the dough clear i mean make it like this this is the dough and this is the butter so this butter i mean the firmness and this firmness supposed to be similar i mean the toughness of this and this one supposed to be similar once you take out the dough from the chiller you just have to thaw for some time and before start laminating just try to touch is it like perfect to roll because if it very hard when you put it in the machine it will start tear up right it will not gonna uh, i mean flat when you want to because uh, when you want to make it flat it won't because because the dough when you put in the sheeter you want it make it thin right because you're going to laminate it for that reason just try to touch the dough it's supposed to be similar to the butter clear so the butter firmness and the dough firmness supposed to be same why because when we laminate this one right so this will spread equally i mean it's going to be inside right let me show you this is just thing like this is the butter there is a butter here inside right and we're going to fold it like this right so when we fold like this and we're going to pass through the machine so what happened this will going to press it so the butter inside inside what we have the butter here what happened it will i mean this temperature the butter temperature i mean the butter texture the firmness and the dough firmness if it's equal then when we going to sheet it up so this one i mean the butter and the dough it will automatically go at the same time that means when you sheet it up the length i mean the length is going to increase so when the length is increasing the same time the butter is also coming with the dough it's not about something if if the butter is hard what will happen when we will you will start pressing it up i mean the the sheeter right because we're going to make it thin because we're going to laminate right so the butter supposed to be spread equally with the this dough because if the butter is hard what happen if you try to this i mean if you try to press this one i mean try to in increase the length at that moment it will tear it will tear from here why because the butter is not not in the same texture as the butter and the dough so both the temperature supposed to be sim same or you can say texture so when you press the butter will should come with the dough i mean along with the dough pressing so wherever the dough going the butter is also coming with it simple as that that is the main logic clear with this that is why we always focus the dough and the fat need to be in a similar texture in every single layer the butter and the dough supposed to be come equally i mean supposed to be with each other right that is what exactly why we are laminating simple so this is important the dough and the fat supposed to be in the same texture right similar so it can just uh, go everywhere i mean wherever the dough will go the butter should come with it right that is why this is important i hope you guys clear now right the ideal temperature to work with lamination is between 20 to 23 celsius you getting me this is the thing ideal temperature for room ideal room temperature is to work with lamination is between 20 to 23 once you bring the butter slab and the dough so you have to thaw it a bit right because it's very very chilled so the chilled one you cannot just run through the sheeter to the machine right you have to thaw for some time so the dough and the butter texture when you press it it should be same right similar then you can go for the process top professional chefs use dough sheeter for laminating as it is efficient and avoid the risk of fat tearing in hotels actually they have a sheeter which is very very important a very important machine when it comes to lamination because it's easy to handle and is faster to do so we used to use a sheeter and the home bakers prefer the lamination in the cold marble slab 
cold marble why just to maintain the temperature i clearly mentioned like some of you uh, chefs use a uh, air conditioner place where to maintain the temperature of the butter so the butter not supposed to get melt when you're working with it right or else you have to be a little faster so we just have to focus that butter shouldn't be melt and we want butter everywhere everywhere every each layer i want butter that's the reason we maintain the temperature and this all techniques important why cold marble as it can control the manage the temperature of the dough and the fat simple as that no rocket science right here we go clear with this